Portable battery packs have really come a long way in the last couple years, and today I've got one of the most advanced, the EcoFlow River Max. It's a 576 watt hour portable power station that's really just a regular EcoFlow River with an included expansion battery. Packaged with the unit are some instructions, a spare set of screws, and a basic set of power cables. These include a combo USB-A to micro USB and lightning cable, an MC4 to XT60 solar charging cable, a DC5521 to DC5525 cable, which is technical jargon for two common DC charging plugs, an AC charging cord, a generic USB-C cable, and a 12-volt car adapter. The EcoFlow River itself, I think, is a great looking piece of equipment. All buttons are smooth and nicely machined. Nothing is loose or poorly presented, and it is reassuringly heavy. It ships with a decal on the top which describes some sort of environmentally friendly manufacturing methods which will produce a unique pattern. Remove to discover. And doing so reveals absolutely nothing. Operation of the river is very simple. A press of the front power button reveals the nicest display I have ever seen on a portable power station. The color LCD displays discharge time at current loads, charge percentage in both numerical and graphical formats, output current, and input current. We also have a really nice looking LED light bar that is mainly just for show, but does change patterns based on whether the unit is turning on, discharging, or charging. Its color can also be customized via the product's app. Input power is provided via either AC or DC charging. The AC plug is a standard PC power supply cable, so replacements should be easy to find and cheap. Above all else, this product's standout feature is its ability to power high draw devices like hair dryers, coffee makers, or vacuum cleaners. EcoFlow has branded this feature X-Boost. However, the manual states that products sensitive to voltage fluctuations should not be used. To me, this was both a confusing and concerning disclaimer. To find out why, I've got my Klein multimeter set up to continuously measure voltage as I run the heat gun. It's also important to remember that in the US, standard voltage is 120 plus or minus 5%, which equals an acceptable range of 114 to 126 volts at the outlet. As I turn the heat gun on low, which draws 6.6 .6 or 792 watts, the voltage output of the EcoFlow River drops to 109. This is not ideal, but probably not enough of a deviation to cause harm to most devices designed to run on a 120 volt system. But let's kick that up a bit, turn the heat gun on high, and draw 12 amps. On high, the voltage drops to 78.3. That's a big problem. Equipment designed to run on 120 volts AC will not run properly on 78. And you'll very likely damage whatever you're trying to power in the process. That said, many don't buy portable power stations to run heat guns. They do it to power things like RVs without running a generator. Here is a 16-foot travel trailer. All right, right now, guys, inside the Airstream, I've got a small fridge running, a couple lights on, the vent fan, and I've got the 12 volt battery system topping off. All that combined is pulling 493 watts, and the EcoFlow River Max is still providing that at 120.5 volts, so that's still all good to go, and it's actually quite a bit more than I've ever able to accomplish with the Jackery. Well, that's at least positive. For me, running the camper is the most important task, so I'm happy. When it comes to recharging, I'm going to first give this thing some AC power from a wall outlet. When plugged in, the EcoFlow River slowly ramps charging watts up from 0 to about 450. The display also switches from discharge time to recharge time, in this case telling me it should take an hour to go from 13 to 100%. That's really quite fast. In fact, I'm not aware of any other portable power station in this price range that can even accept AC volts right from the wall. Almost all others require a DC adapter and charge much, much slower. 
We can also harness sun power to get some free electrons, although doing so with a non-EcoFlow branded solar panel might require multiple adapters. This is due to the river's uncommon XT60 input plug. This Togo Power 60 watt panel, for example, has a very common Anderson style output. That's basically the de facto portable solar panel standard. To get it into the EcoFlow, I first had to go Anderson to MC4 and then MC4 to the included XT60. Searching Amazon for a direct adapter yielded a very surprising number of options. Zero, meaning I'll have to live with multiple adapters, build my own, or buy an EcoFlow panel. Not great options. I mentioned earlier in this video that the River Max is really just a river with an extra battery. This means that if space is a concern, we can easily remove those extra kilos. After removing four screws from the bottom, it pops off. The bottom plate is then reattached using the four shorter screws provided in the accessory bag. We've now got a slimmed down power station that might be a little more convenient when weight is a concern. Now, unlike many competitors, EcoFlow fully endorses the use of their product as an uninterruptible power supply. Although they're very upfront about the fact it's not a true UPS, this means that there's a 30 millisecond delay between running on line voltage and the device being powered by the battery. For a coffee maker, no problem. For a computer, that might be a problem. To test it out, let's see how my TV and Roku stick handle the transition. And that's what I would call a pass with flying colors. The last thing I wanted to run over was this product's app. With it, you can do things like change lighting settings, enable or disable the X-Boost feature, and control just about everything you can with a button. There are also a number of settings one can customize, things like charge profiles and speed, plus download and install firmware updates. So overall, what's the verdict on the EcoFlow River Max? I think it's a great product that fails to deliver on its biggest claim of uniqueness, X-Boost. The best way to sum everything up would be a pros and cons list. I like its overall design, it feels high quality and nothing feels sloppily put together. The display is the best I've ever seen on this type of product. Output power, even with X-Boost disabled, is great as is input power which makes for quick charging. Finally, I really like the fact it can be used as a UPS in a pinch. And now, the bad. I truly dislike everything about X-Boost. The fact it drops voltage to unacceptable levels is both dangerous and reckless. I would recommend disabling it in the app and never looking back. Doing so will maintain 120 volts up until about 650 watts, at which point the unit will shut down due to overcurrent. I'm not a fan of this product's XT60 DC input port. It's quite uncommon and makes using third-party solar panels difficult. Finally, I generally dislike when hardware manufacturers require one to set up an account with them to use their app. In effect, this means we need to send our email address to Shenzhen EcoFlow Technology Limited and give them a number of marketing permissions to get full functionality out of our EcoFlow river. Okay, that's all I had for today. Hopefully it was useful. Take care.